If there's one thing that every great musician has in common, it's great rhythm. Rhythm is 50% of music, and it's not something that should be neglected. To truly play like the greats, gotta have great rhythm. I've experienced this a lot in my own playing, and a few months back, I finally wanted to do what it takes to fix this weakness. But the problem is, if you're not someone who has good rhythm, there really only seems like one way to get out of this cycle. The metronome. Now look, I don't mean to put down the metronome. It could possibly be the most useful tool any musician has ever created. Yet, I constantly see students and myself groaning at the idea of using it. And for good reason. It's just simply not that fun. In fact, there's nothing really musical about it at all. So with that in mind, I wanted to create a rhythm practice session that I actually wanted to do that would actually sound good. And so I created this practice routine that I'm going to show you now that you can do to greatly improve your rhythm. And you can finally play that John Mayer song that influenced me to make this entire video. So with that, we go back in time to the instrument that created rhythm in the first place, the rock. Okay, well, a little more modern than that, the drums, with an even more modern touch. Playing with a drum beat is the perfect way to substitute the metronome. So grab your guitar and I'll show you what I do. I started with this the intention of playing along to a drum beat for just 10 minutes a day. So even if that's all you have, this will work. However, I found it so entertaining that I ended up playing along for much, much longer. to YouTube and search basic drum beat backing track. Then pick a relatively low BPM, maybe about 70 beats per minute. I'm playing at 110 here. To start off, we're just going to work on our right hand. The right hand and left hand sometimes need to be practiced separately. Just like learning to sing a song while playing guitar, it'll take you half the time if you practice sing and the guitar separately, and then you bring them together once you're confident with both on their own. So mute all the strings with your left hand and see if you can create a rhythm along with the drummer. Now get that going for a bit and start to feel comfortable staying on time. Your wrist should be loose, your foot should be tapping, and you should feel a little bit like you want to dance. Because when you're playing guitar, your right hand should be dancing on the string. After you feel comfortable with that rhythm, I want you to add a chord. I'm going to pick an A sus4 on the fifth fret. Pay attention to that kick drum for beat one. Make sure to keep that right hand staying in rhythm. After that, just try to play your rhythm with one chord. You can add it wherever. Don't worry too much about the left hand sounding good. We'll get there. Just focus on your right hand playing well and starting to bring the two hands together. At this point, you should have established a rhythm you like. Doesn't really matter what it is, just make sure you can actually play it on time and smooth. Later in this video, I'm going to tell you how over a month of doing this, you're going to have a ton of different rhythms to play. So now that you have a rhythm that you like, you're going to make a chord progression and switch chords on that leading kick drum. I'm going to choose the chord progression of A sus4, F sharp minor 7, E, and then D. I made a bonus video add-on for this video with 10 different unique chord progressions along with the rhythms to practice them. You can subscribe to my Patreon to get it. things really start to sound spicy. I want you to add a lick and associate this lick to the chord you're playing, which means to use the notes that are close to the chord. 
to create beautiful sounding licks that'll really help to know your pentatonic scales. Just make sure it stays in time. So for example, you can do this. See how I made that lick with the notes around my chord? Then I'm gonna do this on all my chords and make something that sounds like this. Now when you're doing this, make sure you're still tapping your feet or counting the beat in your head. After we get through the exercises, I'm going to tell you why this is so useful. For those of you that aren't quite at the level of playing licks, just try to do any chord embellishment, just by changing the spot of one note like this. At this point, you should have a pretty cool rhythm going on. So for those of you who really want to make things groovy and fun, try playing the rhythm and playing licks anywhere on the pentatonic scales, acting as the lead guitarist. Here, I'm in the key of A, so I can play licks anywhere on the neck in A major as long as I'm back to my next chord on the first beat. This is about as advanced as the exercise gets, but once you get here, there are endless opportunities to make music, and it becomes a very fun way to practice. Okay, so now I'm going to share with you how you can take this exercise and make the most of it to really see serious progress. Before that, I just want to let you know that once again, today's video is brought to you by our friends over at Skillshare. Skillshare is a great website for anyone who loves learning new things online. It's got tons of different inspiring classes for all different creative topics from illustration, photography, video, music production, and a ton more. It's also got tons of awesome guitar classes for you guys to speed up the process of improving on guitar. Millions of people have already used Skillshare and are seeing success with their new skills, and you could join that community of millions for less than $10 a month for the annual subscription. It's a really great way to further your progress on guitar because just like YouTube, there are lots of skilled, experienced guitar teachers, but they filter out all the bad lessons. And each of these teachers have made designated courses for you in order, so you're not scrolling and searching all over the place for good content. I've actually got a bunch of courses on there myself, so you can check those out. It's also cool because you might find yourself joining to learn guitar, but once you subscribe, you've got access to everything. So you might find yourself in no time learning completely different, unique skills to show off to people. I'm really excited Skillshare has sponsored these videos because that brings this content to you and I get to promote them with an offer that benefits you. So the first thousand people to click the link in the description are gonna get a free, free trial of the Skillshare premium membership. So take advantage of that before it runs out. That being said, let's get back to how you're going to be able to make the most of this exercise. This exercise can really greatly improve your rhythm if you're able to do it every day for one month. The first thing to keep in mind is to not gloss over the first part. As you improve, you'll get better at creating a rhythm right away. But strumming along with muted strings is an important part of the exercise. This stresses the fact that sometimes we've got to practice our right hand and our left hand separately in order to improve one faster. The second thing is replication. The point of this exercise is to come out at the end of a month as a master of rhythm. Day one, you create a rhythm. Day two, you try to replicate it. You might not get it perfect, but just try as best you can. After you replicate that rhythm a few times, you now have a rhythm that you can actually play on time. Then you create a new one that's similar and you replicate that. So all of a sudden you have two and this will continue to multiply. At first it's slow, but you do this, it becomes easier and easier to create new ones and you get faster at mastering them until all of a sudden you've got tons of rhythms you can play on time and no struggles to make up new ones every time you pick up the guitar. Third is tapping your feet and counting along. These are useful tools. Before I started counting my rhythm, I really just had no idea what I was playing. It might have sounded like a rhythm to me, but realistically, if rhythm can't be counted, it's probably because it's not really on time. 
timing doesn't always have to be perfect, but the better you get at it, the better you will sound. And actually switching your chords on the one beat is so soothing to listen to. Now there is some controversy about tapping your feet. It's difficult to do and some people say at the beginning it can screw up your timing. I found this to be true to an extent. However, the thing I noticed is that every real song you listen to, you're able to tap your foot along. So if your rhythm is good enough on guitar, shouldn't you be able to tap along as well? Rhythm is about feeling, and when you feel the beat in the music, you want to dance, tap your feet, bob your head, shake your ass, and just move along with it. Although it takes time to be able to do this, I just try to see if I can get my foot to tap along. Not trying to follow my foot tap at all, but instead trying to tap along with my rhythm. The main thing that this will do is really let you know when your timing is good. If that foot is tapping along and it feels right and your head's bobbing along, then you're feeling the rhythm head to toe, meaning others are bound to feel it too. I believe in making this a long-term goal for your playing just overall. If you want a practical guide on how to do everything I've covered here in the video, we made one. And you can get it by subscribing to my Patreon. This guide will include tabs to everything we played here, 10 different drum beats at different speeds, 10 unique chord progression and rhythm to practice with spicy looks included. Also, we're giving away a $1,000 guitar to one of our Patreons once we hit 100 patrons. Leave a like and comment below if you like this video, and make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel for videos like this. See you soon.